Chefs, you have arrived at the chopping block. I'm your host and chopped enthusiast, Samantha Senevaratna. Who will win and who will be chopped? And I'm here to make you unchoppable. You've been chopped. By correcting common mistakes from chopped history. Let's find out what today's lesson is, shall we? Yikes, I'm having bad baker flashbacks. Looks like a dessert that's gone terribly wrong because someone took their eye off the clock. <laughs> Underbaking is one of the most common mistakes in the dessert round. Let's see what happened. The elephant in the room is the undercooked biscuit dough. It's kind of like a tent falling on the bridal party in the middle of the wedding. Kate's batter for her pan dowdy was inedibly undercooked. Leaving the right amount of time for things to bake fully can be difficult. Contestants are under a serious time crunch. Not all kitchens are created equally. Your oven, your bakeware, the ingredients you use, even the weather can affect your baking time. Let's see what's inside my basket. Ooh, I have these beautiful fresh cherries. I have some ricotta cheese, some confectioner sugar, and some phyllo dough. Now that I have all my ingredients, I'm ready to cook. I'm gonna make a delicious cherry ricotta turnover. Okay, let's get baking. So the first thing we have to do is make our filling for our ricotta turnovers. And of course, that starts with some ricotta cheese. Now I have set this in a strainer to drain a bit because I don't want any extra liquid going into my turnover that could really sog out the bottoms. Then we're using confectioner sugar and I use confectioner sugar in this recipe also again to try to absorb some of that extra moisture as opposed to using granulated sugar. We want our filling to be nice and creamy and delicious but not wet. Now to that we're adding an egg yolk, extra richness, extra fat, a little bit of vanilla extract, some ground cinnamon, and a pinch of ground cloves. Mm, as soon as those spices hit the liquid, you can smell them, it's wonderful. Okay, so here I have 16 sheets of phyllo dough. Usually phyllo dough comes frozen, and you're gonna wanna thaw it beforehand. I like to thaw mine in the fridge overnight, the night before I plan to do any baking. I find that if you thaw it at room temperature, the middle sort of sogs out a little bit, and that's no good. At this point, it's kind of delicate, but the truth is, if it rips, if it tears, it doesn't really matter, because you can always just slather on more butter and glue it back together. It's a surprisingly forgiving dough. And so I'm gonna cut this dough into four and a half inch strips. If you have a pizza wheel, that is a great tool to use to cut through. A knife works just fine. Now I'm trying to work a little bit quickly because I don't want my phyllo to dry out. Again, don't worry if it's not perfect. When it folds together, no one will ever know. And I'm gonna put this onto a baking sheet and cover it with a very lightly damp dishcloth. You don't want it to be too damp because that will sog out your dough. Just very lightly damp. Okay, so starting with one piece, we need a lot of butter. That's what's gonna make it puff up in the oven. That's what's gonna make it brown nicely. It's also what's gonna make it taste delicious. Ooh, see, look at this. I've already ripped my dough. <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't matter. It's surprisingly forgiving. So now we'll sprinkle it with some sugar, a little crunch, a little sweetness. Let's add another sheet. So I'm just covering up my mistake and it'll be fine. So now we're gonna start with about a tablespoon of this beautiful ricotta filling and a little bit of chopped cherry, and then we'll fold it. So we'll fold it like a flag. We'll fold the top corner down, just like that, seal it up. I like to brush it with a little butter even in between, just to make sure everything puffs up beautifully and gets nice and crisp. Okay, so I'm brushing it one more with butter, folding that over, making sure all my edges, you can see I have a dry side right here. Get that with some more butter. More butter, the better. Put it on our sheet, sprinkle it with more sugar, and we have to remember to cut a little slit in the center. We're just basically trying to release some of that steam when it cooks so that it doesn't burst. 
Okay, now I can fold the rest of my turnovers. The contestants of Chopped would never get away with taking this long. It's much easier to do a nice job when you have plenty of time. Let's just finish this last one up with butter, a little more sugar. Make sure when you do the slate, you're not cutting through the whole pie. You see my bottom is still intact. Now these go into a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes until they're puffed and golden brown. In a recipe, there's usually a time marker and a visual cue. You wanna use both of those things. The time marker is basically just a guideline. Use your other senses to make sure that your food is done. So I'm gonna be looking for puffed and golden brown at around, you know, 22 minutes. Keep an eye on it, smell things, don't rely on the time alone because all ovens are different and like I said, a lot of things can affect your bake time. Looks so cute. Look at the bottom of that. You can see it's nice and golden brown. The sugar's caramelized a little bit, so it's gonna be really crunchy and delicious. Now, I'm just gonna drizzle these guys with a little bit of honey. Sticky and sweet and beautiful. So there you have it. Here are my cherry ricotta turnovers. So, whose dish is on the chopping block? Oh, no, you don't. This dish is unchoppable. It's crisp, it's brown perfectly, and the inside is fluffy and moist. It's sure to make a lasting impression on your friends and family. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't get chopped.